So this is like part three-ish in a series of animation videos I've been looking at for Godot multiplayer. And now this definitely will work with single player, but I just wanted to make sure that it did work in the multiplayer setup. But what we're trying to do with this is basically two things. How do we dynamically animate our characters based on a user input? And how do we also scale as our animation load grows with the game, right? So as your game grows, you're getting more animations. Like how do you organize that? So I'm gonna have a little bit of a strategy for both of those things and we're gonna cover that. Now, I'm not gonna go line by line and code every single thing and every single line and show you like that. That's just gonna take way too long, but I'm gonna review all the code that I'm using for the animations and I'm also gonna look at the animation tree and how I set that up and how it should work and the motivations behind it and why I chose it to do it this way. This dynamic kind of aiming thing, well, it's probably gonna be a better approach to use IK or inverse kinematics, but right now Godot's IK support is kind of in a gray area. I think they're rebuilding it and the current version is deprecated. So I needed to find a workaround, which is you know common in programming and game development. So. I went with this approach and it seemed to work out really well. So the main concept I'm trying to achieve with this is if we have a character and you're playing your game and you want to toggle a weapon and okay, you have a pistol. Now you want to be able to aim up and have that gun go up and aim down and have that gun lower down to the ground. So that's basically the motivation behind why I'm doing this. So if you want to do also have like a rifle stance, you can swap over to rifle stance and you can see if you had a rifle, I just have a pistol right now. You know he would be aiming that way and you can toggle between that and also aim up and down and have him bend over and look down as he uh, looks down and aims down if i aim with this other guy you can see he's he's aiming up with his gun and aiming down and then if we want to like go ahead and do it with the rifle stance he can go ahead and do that and spin in real time and this is a multiplayer setup in real time we can dynamically aim up and down and swap between guns so i'm going to show you how i did that setup today and there's basically three main concepts here, which are how do you manage the base animation? So, for example, if I'm walking like this and he has the gun out, how do you manage that versus just normal walking? Right. So in theory, you could just blend the common, you know, walk animation with a uh, holding a pistol and then you could apply this up down. Uh, however you want without worrying about any other strategies. But I wanted to separate those two animations in a in a different state machine and the reason is because if you notice if i go to the right i don't have those arm animation bones uh, isolated from the actual animation and that gun's wobbling all over the place so if you don't like that then this approach is going to help you because if i walk straight that gun's pretty stiff it's not going anywhere it looks like he's aiming down the barrel and the same thing if i strafe to the left it's locked it's not moving I didn't actually implement the right strafe just for this illustrative purposes. That's one of the main motivations behind doing all this is I wanted to be able to lock down the aim functionality while not having it wobble all over the place. Now, there's a slight wobble here, but that's within a reasonable tolerance, so I wasn't really worried about it. But again, any of these little adjustments that you see here with the separate arm and up and down animations with him walking or whatever, that can all be tweaked in Blender. And I showed you my process and workflow in the last video. So go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. So that's basically the motivation behind this is how you can, you know, walk and be able to aim and not have the gun wobble around everywhere and how we actually do that to handle separate animations and a growing number of animations, right? So if I had my two handed weapon out and I wanted to be able to do the same thing, I could do that, right? It's locked in place. It's not going to wobble all over the place. But if I start strafing to the side with it out, look, it's wobbling all over. And maybe you want that. And that would be totally fine. You can stop watching right now and just blend together your rifle animation, uh, your normal strafe animation with your rifle animation and not worry about it. But what I'm going to do is show you how we can lock down those separate animations for aiming and also the manage the animations for walking. And then the third thing is basically how do you keep track of where his aim is with that gun, right? So in real time, how do we track the player's movement when he moves the mouse up to look up and to aim down? So let's just dive in. So just to give you some quick context, I created a basic weapon class, and this is all for proof of concept. This isn't really best practices or anything. I'm, I just made all this so that I can illustrate this and demonstrate the concepts and strategies I'm trying to show here. So this weapon class has an ID, uh, a name, a type like rifle or pistol, 
a motion stance and a weapon stance and bone blend filters. And we're gonna talk about what these mean in a minute. And then I have a weapon manager class that will set up uh, weapon slots. So uh, number one, like slot number one, like I, I actually made a key bindings for one and two. Uh, let me just pull that open really quick. Uh, so one is toggle pistol and two is toggle rifle. You got to set up your game however your requirements are uh, needed for it. But for this, if I hit one, he'll toggle pistol. And if I hit two, he'll toggle rifle. And that's not done here, but this is just like the way I'm setting it up where I have this weapon management class and it builds a, a weapon inventory that we can get a weapon based on the weapon ID. And that way it'll return the correct weapon. Now we're going to return some things from this and I'm going to cover that in a minute, but just let's just pause on that for now. So if we look over in the uh, player input synchronizer class that I have, I'm, I basically just have a process function and this is where all my player inputs gets handled. Uh, as you can see, I have my toggle pistol and of course toggle rifle and they make a call to weapon change respectively with the uh, toggle uh, command. So the weapon change RPC is still within the same class and all we're going to do is this is going to call from the client, right? So my inputs handled a client authority, right? So all my inputs. So if I hit one or two, it's going to toggle one or the one or two of these uh, switches here and it's going to hit this RPC. So now we're on server side. And then what we do is we make a call over to our player script to set the active weapon. And that's going to be and it's going to pass in the slot that was selected. So we don't actually do anything yet on our client. So back over to the player script. Um, if we go down to that function that I just called out, which is set active weapon server, uh, and you know, I just named it server so I wouldn't get confused. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to pass in a weapon and based on if it's a toggle rifle or pistol, I call this determine toggle weapon and basically figure out, did he, did he already have the gun out? If he did just go ahead and and remove that gun and just uh, apply an empty slot or go ahead and actually apply that rifle or weapon. So this is just some quick logic to demonstrate toggling the weapon up and down using one and two. So the, again, this is still server side, but what we're going to do is at the end of this uh, set server weapon call, we're going to call the set active weapon client. So this is going to call back to the client through another RPC. So now we're in the client context and over there, we're going to grab our weapon manager and, and ask them, uh, to get the active weapon. So we can't replicate active weapon, or at least I couldn't because I think um, I think Godot is still so, still working out the kinks with their um, replicating like complex objects. It just wasn't working right. So I'm just replicating weapon change ID. Actually, it's not weapon change ID. It's active weapon ID. So if we look under player properties, uh, I'm synchronizing or replicating active weapon ID. Uh, and again, before I go back to the client, uh, that is set on the server. So our server establishes the current weapon that was selected, then it makes a call down to the client side, right? So I hit one, it goes to the server and says, change weapon to whatever I hit. It changes it and it calls back to the client and it says, here's the weapon ID that you need to change to. So now we've established on the client, the local peer, which weapon uh, he's gonna change to. So then at, at that point, we go ahead and kick off this call to change animation. Now, this is just a function that I created to that basically handles all the transitions between animations in our game. Oh, and by the way, I should mention that the uh, weapon stance or the weapon manager class is an auto load, so it can be accessed anywhere. I don't know if you picked up on that. Anyways, so this change animation, like I said, gets kicked off anytime there is a change in animation. So if you go from idle to walk to jump or running or whatever, it gets passed through here and those three big concepts we talked about earlier in the video where there's one that's managing the actual, you know, animation, the base animation of the player, the weapon stance, like aiming and controlling, like which aim we're going to use. Are we going to use one arm aiming? Are we going to use dual arm, uh, like a rifle aim or something like that? That's going to be determined here, uh, actually through, I think, this weapon stance call. And then the underlying base animation that I had just mentioned is going to be called here. And it's always specific to whichever animation that has a specific um I guess, set of customizations designed for that animation. Remember the wobble thing? Well, this would be where that wobble thing gets turned off because we're actually able to isolate uh, a weapon stance that works with a, a single arm aim or a dual arm aim uh, mechanic. Let me just stop here for a second before we get any further and let's pull up our animation tree and hopefully shine some more light on this. Okay, so this big selection that I have here, this uh, 
change animation function maps almost directly to this transition right here, this this animation tree tra transition. And we have idle, walk, run, jump up, down and land. Um, and that's exactly what you're seeing here in this transition. So this transition maps one to one to our change animation. And uh, just just to note, this current animation actually does uh, is synchronized. It is replicated. So if we take a quick detour over to our player property synchronizer, our current animation is synchronized just just in case that wasn't clear. And another thing is, how do we determine our current animation? I think it's probably important to review that. This determine motion animation is what governs our current animations as far as motion goes. So if it's under a certain threshold, um, it will be idle. If your player input is running, like holding the shift key, it'll upgrade to running and then other other it'll just default to walk if for other animations. Um, and we set the current animation in a couple other places within our main controller code, which is just up here. Um, like you can see when I if I'm not on the floor and I do a jump motion, it goes ahead and sets it to jump up and, and we have our jump down and land uh, functionality respectively. So that determine motion animation is called here once he's back on the floor. It, it should probably be called like determine on floor motion animation, but that's what it does. So just keep in mind that this apply input is called in the physics process and it's constantly called. And the change animation is also called when an animation actually changes, right? So I'm not constantly calling it. And I know there's a lot of animation setups out there where it seems like the animation code is constantly called and I didn't really like that. So I'm doing it more event based. So when an animation actually changes, we call change animation. And I'll talk about this animate function a little later in the video. So if we go back to our animation tree and how it maps to change animation, we can see the various animations that come off it like idle. Uh, we have our run, jump up and down respectively. And that's basically everything here. Now, the one we want to focus on is the walk state machine. And the walk state machine is interesting because it's not just three different animations. It's three different blends. And this is kind of one of those strategies that you may want to use when you're in your scaling your animations in your game is you have a animation from a transition or a state from your transition into an actual state machine, right? So walk will go into a state machine and then you can build out various animations here and keep expanding them. And the way that I've found that works is you use conditions. So this is like my default blend condition. This is my right arm pistol condition and this is my dual arm condition. And what what I say conditions, it's basically mapping to a 1D space. So this is just what is it? Uh, strafe left and strafe right, right, respectively. And in the middle is just plain walking. So this one's just plain walking. But if we look at the walk arm right pistol one, that's going to be walking, holding, you know, the right arm pistol up. And of course, the strafe let me select it the strafe left while holding pistol and what this animation's doing what this specific uh animation points are doing is that they're taking away the wobble by ignoring or not having keyframes for that right arm bone so if you're if you click on this walk hold or right pistol and he's actually walking but there's nothing there's no keyframes for that right arm it's just basically ignored and that's like the first concept behind this is we're making states that will ignore certain bones or certain keyframes for uh, different bones so that you can blend it nicely uh, so you're not getting that wobble to a specific aim, like a like a single arm aim, a uh, single arm aim up down or a dual rifle aim. Now, again, you can scrap all this and just put everything into one animation and just have your aim animations, you know, wobbly and that sort of thing. But I really wanted it to be cleaner and I thought this was a nice way to do that is to separate them out into different stances. OK, so if we go back to the main animation tree, you can see the three little uh, checkboxes here. Those actually match to the different conditions that we have. This main concept here, this is like one of the three main concepts where we're controlling, where this one is controlling the um, motion stance for whatever weapon stance that maps to it. The conditions that we use to select that. So you remember back in the weapon manager, what we talked about a little bit ago, that's going to map to these. So if, if we look at the weapon class really quick, we have quick, we have motion stance and weapon stance. The empty slot doesn't have anything, right? It's just uh, it's a default blend and a walk straight blend. So that's just 
this walk default blend, or if I click on this condition default blend, that's this, right? So default blend maps to this first condition. So that's like if we don't have any guns in our hands and we're just walking. Now, if you select, if you hit one on the keyboard, it's that active weapon. Remember how we uh, down here where we set the active weapon. Let me just find it really quick. So active weapon now is based on whatever the server thought the or whatever the server determined the idea of that weapon was. Well, that active weapon maps back to a full weapon here. So now we've equipped the pistol. So the pistol says that the motion stance is going to be right arm pistol. So what does that mean? So that's going to map to this condition right here. So this right arm pistol maps exactly to that. Now for the dual arm where you have like a rifle in your hands, that's going to map back to here. So this dual arm rifle maps over to dual arm rifle here. And that is the motion stance management part that I'm, that I'm talking about. So we can switch between these different stances based on what weapon he has equipped. Every weapon that you would have should be able to provide what motion stance, which we're reviewing now, and then we'll review in just a second the weapon stance that he needs to have. So on the motion side, you're basically ignoring or you're not keyframing or you've created animations in Blender, like in my last video I talked about, where you don't keyframe the uh, the bones that relate to the weapon stance you wanna have. So if you're using that one arm pistol uh, in the motion side of things, you don't have any keyframes for that one arm that you want it to be smooth for the aiming. So that's what we're doing here. So if we go back to our root and we go back to our player input, let's go back or our player file and we go back up to um, our change animation. So let's say we change from an idle to a walk. So we transition to the walk and we're gonna call the set animation motion stance. So I talked about conceptually how we do it. So this is how we do it in the code. Okay, so we've transitioned from walk and now we're in the state machine. So because, you know, I just sh showed you up there and that function now calls down that change animation function calls here with the base animation, which is walk. Oh, and by the way, those uh, I really want these enums to be more string based because I hate that I like hard coded walk here. Uh, so I was I just haven't had a chance to refactor it. Um, but yeah, bear in mind that I think there's a better way to do that. So walk is applied and we'll come down to set animation motion with weapon stance. So the first thing we wanna do is build the parameters to access the path in our animation tree for that condition in this walk state machine right here. So one of these conditions. So we, how do we get the condition? Well, we get the condition by building the parameter path and then we add on the motion stance that that weapon had. So the pistol has right arm pistol and the, and the rifle has the dual arm weapon stance. So we make a string that maps to right here, this condition. So it'll be parameters, walk, underscore, uh, walk state machine. So this, so this is dynamically built. So, so you can do this for any animation that you wanna like subsequently add. Like if you wanna add aiming to running or, or dashing or something like that or whatever, you can dynamically do that by just passing in the base animation with this setup. So we've got our weapon stance path set here with this parameters and that's gonna point to a condition inside this walk state machine. And if we have the pistol selected, it's gonna be that, what, did, what was the pistol? Right arm pistol. So it's gonna point to this right arm condition here and it's gonna trigger this state to be true. It's gonna, and it's gonna enable it. Uh, however, it doesn't enable on its own. Uh, like you, there's like an extra step here. And what I noticed was I, whatever I switched to first, like uh, when I was developing this, like if I did arm, I wasn't able to switch to dual rifle, like it wasn't switching. And what I what dawned on me was this start in this state machine uh, or these conditions that base off this start are auto and they're auto when the the condition is met, but they're only auto from the start position. So I don't know if this makes sense, but if you were just starting out and you were making your games and the first couple things we do is build a state machine, like the, my first Godot project, when I was looking at animations, I built a state machine and, and the way the state machines generally go is it start into idle. So then everything is based off idle. Well, that's not the type of state machine we're building here. So you actually have to reset it back to start. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. So if you select the condition right here, we're setting the condition based on that path we're setting it to true so this condition's true and you want to switch like toggle to the rifle it wasn't working so what you have to do is you have to grab the state machines playback object which i'm doing right here and then you start it so you're taking it from here and you're moving back to start 
And because you just set the condition to the rifle one, like you switched over to the rifle, it'll now properly go and toggle to that rifle animation and it'll show it uh, in real time. So that was a interesting little tidbit there that I discovered that was really important for this. Now you can use travel. Uh, I just have a little note here. I was able to use travel as well. So maybe if your state machine was a little bit more complex, you can consider using that. Uh, but for something simple like this, I thought just going back to start worked really well. Okay, and then just to wrap up this side of the motion management, I just grab a reference to the previous motion animation and uh, just set it to whatever we just determined so that the next animation that comes through, uh, we actually kill it off. We kill that condition, actually. We set that condition to false. Um, that, so that would be this, right? So if we were aiming with the pistol condition, that was true. When you switch to rifle, we would just go ahead and, and turn this uh, previous condition to false. I think that might be overkill. I, I know I tested this a little bit, but I can't remember if it was absolutely necessary, but I felt like it's good, clean practice. So I went ahead and just you know, explicitly told that previous animation to uh, disable. Okay, so that's how we switch our main motion stances, right? So going from walking to walking with a gun in our hands, and that's that's what that function just did. So we'll, what we need to look at now, oh, and real quick though, um, I know I said this a minute ago, but if you wanted to add uh, support for aiming with uh, a rifle or a pistol, you could go ahead and just copy this and add it under the run section and it would enable it and just of course you would have to change this to you know say run or whatever but this is generic enough so that once you had your animations that ignored the correct keyframes and that sort of thing this could be uh, expandable to fit those uh to fit those different animations generically so that's just one thing i wanted to point out so anyways uh once we have our animation picked I only have this here because I'm only I only care about aiming with walk right now. Like in my game, you can't aim when you're running or you're jumping or anything like that. Just when you're standing still with idle and idle doesn't have a stray for anything right now. And honestly, I could have I didn't even separate out the I didn't ignore the keyframes in idle because he's just standing there and it's like the wobble is barely noticeable. So it was clean enough without messing with it. So I'm only doing this on walk for demonstration purposes. Um, but after you've got your motion, your base, uh, the keyframe animation for walking where you're ignoring certain keyframes. Then we switch over to the animation weapon aim stance. So this is like the inverse of what we just did. So what we just did was we have a walking animation that ignored that doesn't have keyframes for the right arm. Well, this is going to be the actual keyframes for only the right arm, right? So this is just going to control that right arm blending between like an up forward and down state. Uh, so this is going to be enabling that. So let's go look at how you enable that in the code. We're going to come back out from this <laughs> the walk state machine and we're going to come out of this transition here and we're going to go over to this section. So this is going to be the next big concept. This uh, this blend to this motion weapon aim stance uh, blend and also this active weapon aim stance uh, state machine. This comes off of it. I'm just organizing it down here. OK, so what we're doing here, let me try to maybe fit it so you guys can see the code. Um, and oh, by the way, the code will be available uh, through my Patreon. So if you want to go check that out, um, please do that. Uh, so what we're doing here is we are determining whether we even need to be aiming or not. Right. This is just an on or off switch here. So like I said just a second ago in my game, if you're jumping or running or if you don't have any guns equipped, then you're not going to be aiming. So you basically just skip this section uh, and um, you set this blend to zero. So that's what this is doing. This line of code right here, it's setting this blend to zero. Just pop it right down to zero. You're not aiming. You don't have any guns out or whatever. But let's say you do have a gun out. Let's say you have your rifle or your pistol out. This apply aim would be set to one. You go ahead and you take this blend and you push it over to one. And now you have your aim engaged. But now your player is walking, but his right arm is just sitting still, right? Because that's that's what we're doing right now. But now you need to animate that. So you need to apply the correct animation based on our weapon stance. So if we come over here, we're going to first what we're going to do is we're going to grab a reference to this uh, blend, this blend tree down here, and we're going to apply filters based on the specific weapon. Now, I don't know if this is the correct way to do this, but this seemed to work great for me. So I'm going to go ahead and roll with this strategy and you guys can make a call yourself on that. But if we look back at the weapon manager, so we've got our weapon stance. Um, actually, let me just check really quick where I'm at and just make sure. OK, yeah, so we have our active weapon right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to this blend and we're going to filter 
we're, it's basically isolating which bones that we want to apply for just that arm aiming or arms aiming or maybe your head neck and spine and arms or whatever for the dual weapon so you're basically going to go and manually or programmatically select whichever filters you need now you could say well why can't you just do it once in the beginning well because aiming with one arm with one pistol is only going to be what is it right shoulder arm and hand and then down to the thumb or whatever right you're not going to do anything else at least in my setup that's how i have it working and like how would you do that in real time you you couldn't do this in real time you you, you don't have access to this when someone's playing your game right you couldn't switch to dual uh dual arms holding a rifle and then go in and select the left shoulder and all the left arm you know bones or whatever you wouldn't be able to do that i needed to find a way for this strategy to do this programmatically oh and by the way keep this enable filter filtering enabled um, the way this is set up, that's it's just going to be better to keep that enabled. So what we're going to do is in real time, once we determine which active weapon we have and we've switched to a stance that needs a weapon, we're going to get the filters from that weapon. So if we go back over to weapon manager, that's going to be this long string here. So it's literally an array of strings that map to all of the bones that are going to be in this animation so if we come back over to our animation uh where is it and uh, actually the armature so our player so here's our character um it's going to map to all these bones in here and it's going to in, in you what you need to do is make sure that the names like the armature 001 or whatever these get imported as different names based on what you're, you might not even have anything that looks like this at all it might be completely it might just say right hand or whatever slash right hand so you need to make sure that this and what the name of your skeleton is in this hierarchy matches perfectly here for whatever bones you need to select or else this won't work at all that's just like that's just the nature of this filter uh so all these bones here are from the right shoulder I think right shoulder is at the end. Yeah, right shoulder all the way down to the thumb. So this whole arm is filtered when you're aiming with the pistol. So because we know that's our active weapon, we'll go ahead and grab those filters and we apply them, pull up our animation tree. We apply them to this blend. So now you have your walking without right arm keyframes blended in with the right arm filters that we just said, go ahead and turn on because we, you know, we, we went from zero to one. Well, not 15, zero to one. And now this is basically saying, turn on all the bones that you have blended between the walk from that's gonna be provided from the state machine. So our state machine is gonna provide the rest of the bones that we need to animate. I mean, it doesn't have to, but in order for this to work, that's, that's what we gotta do. To do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to, uh, where am I at? This active weapon aim stance, which maps to this state machine. Okay, so we're gonna grab a reference to um, the conditions in the state machine. So here we go. So we're going to go into another set of uh, states inside the state machine. And given our weapon stance, which if we look back over at our weapon, uh, if we got a pistol, it's going to be right arm pistol. And the reason why I didn't just use one field and is is because your walk animation is going, the, the right arm walk animation that this map to, is going to ignore shoulder down to your thumb. However, you may want to have a different type of, uh, I guess, weapon aim. So maybe this stance is just for straight up and down, but like maybe you want to aim where he's holding the gun sideways and you can have another state that would map to that type of aim, or maybe he holds it upside down, or maybe it's, you know, a grenade stance or something. It's the same bones that you're going to be ignoring for those one arm weapon stances, but you might not want to use the same exact animation on the other end, the aim side of things. So this is like the number, the, the big second, the second big concept here is, you know, the arm side, the aim side of things. So we're going to go in here and we're going to select this right arm condition, which is here, right? Because that's the weapon that we have where we selected our pistol and we're going to apply that condition. We're going to set it to true because apply aim said we got it. And then what we're going to do is the same exact thing we did on the motion end of things is we're going to restart that state machine so that it plays it correctly. And of course, we we grab the previous condition to make sure we set it to false so that we don't have any like false negatives or false positives or whatever uh, is going to make that state machine. So this is another area where you can grow out your animations. Uh, if you wanted to have a bunch of different stances, you can put them all in here. And I know on one of my previous videos, 
I wasn't actually sure if I was going to be able to do this and I thought I would have to have a blend for each weapon stance, like its own separate blend and somehow transition to them. Well, I didn't have to do that. I actually figured this out to consolidate it into one blend and one state machine. And in here you can handle all the different uh, weapon arm stances for aiming. So these are isolated bones. So this stance right here, if we go into it, it's just these are both 1D blends, by the way. This is just one arm forward. It's literally this is the animation. It's just holding his arm. It's not doing anything. He's not moving. It's just one arm out. And then this is one arm down. And this is one. This one over here is one arm up. And the same exact thing with the rifle. This rifle is set to one arm forward. It's actually two arms forward and then two arms down respectively and, and up. So that's all these states are doing is they're allowing you to move from forward to up to down as you go across from zero to negative one is down and then to one is pointing up. So you're going to just repeat this. If that's all your game needs is aiming down to up, you're just going to repeat this for every different weapon stance that you have. Now, one key thing to note here is the filters going back to the filters because it's a little confusing is that the thing about the filters between these different states, if it's not clear, is this state is only going to filter on the pistol arm. So that one arm from the shoulder down to the hand. But the dual rifle stance, this stance here, it's going to have a lot more bones because like it's like way longer than that other single arm uh, configuration that we just talked about because it's going to have in my game right now this demo it's got sh both shoulders down to the, th to the thumbs basically down to the fingers and then it has head neck spine zero one and two i think all in there because i'm allowing him to like bend over and look down as you saw earlier in that earlier animation demo that we did at the beginning so that's why it's got so much uh so much more um what is it uh a bones to isolate in this filter here that that we're going to set. So it's going to actually include, you know, spine one, two, spine two, neck, head, both arms down from the shoulder. So it's a lot more bones that we need to filter, but we get to do it dynamically now because it's set in the actual uh, it's it's tied to the actual current weapon that we have. So that's the beauty behind this strategy here. So that's that pretty much wraps up the second big concept of, you know, how do we, you know, the first one was the we have the motion and managing the stance to uh, enable or be compatible with a specific weapon, whether we're holding one arm or two arm. And then the second one is how do we actually, you know, apply the aims based on whatever weapon we have. And, and it's the inverse of bones, right? So whatever we have filter out on the front, we're going to have applied on the back end, which is this uh, state machine aiming and it allows us to aim up and down. So that's like the two big concepts and this is really all the code I use, but how do you actually aim in real time? And I did cover this in a quick stream the other day, uh, but just to review it again, uh, the physics process, anytime there's a change in animation, we're going to immediately do the call, the, ch the change animation call, and which is those two big concepts that we just reviewed. And then we're going to kick off and animate really quick to make sure we immediately engage the aim. So that's what animate is going to do. And if we don't have any animations that change, we don't come in here. We don't hit call change, uh, change animation. It's it's never called until an animation changes. But animate is what we actually animate the character in real time with. Right. So this isn't state based. This is constantly called this animate. So what is animate handling? It's going to actually handle the aims of the weapons. And, and again, this is different per animation, right? So if you don't have and, I, and this doesn't include this includes more than just aiming. This includes everything. This includes walking. Um, as you can see here, I'm allowing people to aim in idle stance. And what we're doing is I have this aim up down, which I should mention is replicated. So aim up down maps to where he is aiming up or down. And let's see. I think let me see if I can just show you so I, I demoed this, I think, in a previous video or in a previous stream, so I'm not going to go too deep into it, but I'm using a camera calculation called relative cam that I figured out from somewhere and it's just my camera rotation X. So it's just going to give me that like up or down. So I grab that and I come back over here and I do some magic with it and I give it, you know, this this is a little bit of offset because the gun might not be exactly where I want it to be. So if, I, if you don't want to play around too much with the animations and make it perfect, well, you could probably do this little bit of offset and you could probably have an offset per gun. So like if 
if the offset was great, uh, if you didn't need an offset with your, you know, rifle, but you needed it for a weapon, this is another thing that you can do dynamically. So this gets applied to the aim up down and I inverse it to make it correct um, because otherwise it would be opposite. And, and, and again, you can if you if you hate that, like the motion forward uh, backwards with the mouse, if you hate that, then you can just probably leave that positive. But I like it the way I have it now where you look down and up respectively with the mouse forward and backward. Um, but that's how the aim up down is set. And that's in our apply input, which is called in our uh, physics process. So that's constantly getting called and it's synchronized from the server. So we have that server authority and down in our animate, which again is client side. So it's going to be running on the client side because it's animations. We don't really care to run this on the server. Uh, it's going to be applying that aim to the let me pull it up again to try to come full circle with this. It's to the active weapon aim stance state machine. So that maps directly back to whichever stance we're currently selected, right? So act, uh, it's gonna say parameters, active um, aim stance state machine, which is this what we're in right now. And then it's gonna be stance underscore. And then I have the name of the weapon stance, which again, maps back to um, this weapon stance right here. And of course, slash blend position means it where you open up in here and then aim up down is going to be between negative one and one. So in the middle, it's going to be aiming forward uh, one up and negative one down. So that's how we aim up and down with idle. And it's the exact same thing with walk. Exact same thing, except the stance will be different because um, so why didn't I just stick this in there once? Because it's exactly the same line of code. Um, well, because I don't want this to apply to all animations and there's probably a an improvement or refactor here, but let's just move past that for now. So it's literally the exact same line of code. Uh, the only thing that's going to be different is whatever the dynamic uh, weapon stance that is currently set based on whatever weapon you have. And I did a little stance underscore um, just to keep it consistent here. Uh, so that's just what that's going to be there. The other thing we're doing is this is my actual motion uh, animation uh, or my animation based on motion. So if we come back over here, whatever state that we're currently in is already selected. This has nothing to do with it. It doesn't care. All it's doing is building a parameter string to whatever state's been selected, right? Because we're using that active weapon uh, stance again. And everything in the walk state machine is prefixed with walk. That's why you see this uh, walk underscore. Oh, that's that's why I did it. <laughs> I like totally forgot why I did the stance underscore. So I'm, I'm doing it so that you can name them respectively to whatever different areas that you're acting on. Uh, so we're building a string to set a blend position on whichever state's been selected. So whether it's this one, we just go blend right or left. And that's all this motion is doing. So that's going to allow us to uh, if we're over to the left here, it's going to allow us to strafe. I think that's strafe. Yeah. And then here's just walking forward and then strafe to the right, respectively. So that's all this is doing is just basic strafe or walking forward or backward motion. And we're going to apply our aim like we just talked about with idle. And then on running, it's the exact same thing uh, for the running. Uh, we just have just, you know, running standard run animation and then jog strafe left and jog strafe right, right, respectively. So that's all that's going to do. And that basically gives us everything that we've talked about so far that pretty much goes full circle, but there's a couple really important things that I need to talk about that I discovered during uh, development. So one thing that was happening is when the character was aiming and I brought in a multiplayer scenario and the other player drops in, uh, if I was toggling the weapons, it, it started toggling for both. And I thought, well, this is a replication or a synchronization or authority problem. And I went over this and I basically lost a day to this, uh, trying to figure out what this was. But what ends up happening is Godot behind the scenes will try to replicate scene objects wherever it can. And if you don't want it to do that in certain scenarios, it seems really relevant. I, I don't know why certain scenarios don't because I'm able to do a lot of other things. But because we're editing filters, I wasn't able to apply the filters to just one client or one peer or one player. It was applying to everybody when I was doing it. So the way to fix that is you got to select First, come over to your animation tree and select the tree root and make sure to hit that local to scene checkbox. That's going to make sure that anywhere the scene is running, it's local to scene. Now, I'm not going to do a great job on describing what local to scene is. Go look it up and 
If you understand it better than I do, go right down in the description. But it's it's basically what fixed this. And then also on this blend, this uh, motion side of things, you also have to select local to scene. I noticed that once those two and those two things alone were selected, that allowed these filters to be applied individually to whatever client had those filters applied respectively to. So that pretty much wraps up the entire process here for my, you know, my strategy and my motivation and, and why I did this and how I did this. Now, I know, like I said in the beginning of the movie, I, I think inverse kinematics will probably overtake this as a solution. But right now, this works great. You can aim up or down. You can switch to different weapons. Uh, when I jump, he go the, the weapon goes away and then he immediately comes back. And you can see he's holding that there and I can just toggle easily. If I hit pistol and then hit pistol again, it toggles it off. I can strafe to the left with it, uh, as you can see, and oh, I'm running, so it didn't work, right? So that's uh, another good demonstration. But one little thing I'm going to show you, see if you can notice it. Do you see how he like uh, threw his arms out? Now, I mentioned this into another, uh, I think on my stream the other day, is when you're switching from a, a motion and we weapon stance to a non-motion or weapon stance, uh, it's causing this bug where he goes. To, it's not really a bug. It's just he doesn't have an animation for like a split second. So he throws down into T pose. I haven't been able to 100 percent iron out what this is, why this is happening. But I think what's happening is let me just scroll down a little bit. So the set animation weapon aim stance, if I go back there and if we go over to the animation tree, what's happening when I go from holding a gun to not holding a gun because I jumped or I hit shift and now I'm running. This blend here, this animation, this motion with blend stance immediately goes to zero, boom. And it's like the animation tree or animation machine behind the scene doesn't have enough time to blend uh, him like getting rid of the weapon into the next animation, which is running. And I don't know if it's a you know artifact of how this transitions are set up or maybe I've got something set up weird. If you notice something that I can fix, let me know. But what I think it is, is because we immediately go to zero without any kind of like transition time, it's causing him to like fling out in the T pose and it looks really weird. So what I think, and I actually prototyped this, I did a quick proof of concept, uh, but I didn't have time to flesh it out for this video, so I didn't include it, is I made a little mini transition using uh, the time change of a delta and I went from one down to zero over like a half a second. And that seemed to allow his arms to go down and then gradually go into that run without splitting out into that T pose. And I, I think because we gradually transition with that blend versus like immediately transition. Um, and again, it doesn't matter if you use transitions. I know someone's gonna think that. Uh, I tried everything. I, I've got transitions set to point to all the way around and it, it's, it's not working. Uh, but I, I think it's this and I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. But if you're interested in seeing that fix, let me know if you're interested in seeing how to do the T pose fix and I'll, I'll do a follow up video uh, after this. So, um, so this pretty much wraps it up. I, I don't think I missed anything. This is his normal walking, walking and running uh, state here. So he's walking right now. I don't have any uh, weapon stances going, so it's just the normal one. But the second I hit one, uh, that is going to activate a weapon stance, which will get applied uh, here. Remember, we apply that condition uh, to uh, right, our transition walk. We'll go over to the walk state machine and based on whichever gun he has, it selects the state machine accordingly. And then at the exact same time, we also filter out the or isolate the bones that we want to use for our aiming and our arms. So it's basically the inverse of what we have uh, for bones and keyframes back in the uh, walk state machine. And then we apply that down here uh, to whatever you know gun we're holding. And then of course, uh, when he's running around and actually aiming up and down, that's again, that's that's gonna be handled here up in the animate section. So those three things, uh, those three big concepts basically were able to give us this, I, I wanna say workaround for, you know, until we get some reverse, you know, kinematics, uh, stuff back in the works and maybe I missed it. Maybe they're there. I, I still think that this is really powerful and this isn't just 3D compatible, right? This is everything in here can be converted to a 2D game. I, there's really no difference in in concepts. And I, I think a strategy would work for either type of game. So if you're looking at trying to, you know, dynamically animate 
some character motions or whatever for your game. This is definitely one way to do it. And, and also like if you're looking at strategies for how to expand your game, uh, expand the animations you have in your game, we've kind of talked about that today. So, you know, those are those two things that I really wanted to cover. And as you can see, clearly I can aim up and down and it's being synchronized to the other player's screen. Now, I'm not counting for lag or anything, so don't bust me for that right now. This is this is just getting started. So we're not going to look into that right now. But I, I think this is working really good right now, and I'm, I'm excited to see where we've landed with it. So if you guys have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments. And if there's something else you want to see about this, uh, please let me know and um, give it a like if you enjoyed it, if you're happy with how this turned out and or if you're like super confused, let me know in the comments and I, I'll do another video on it or maybe I'll get on a stream or something. And uh, please make sure you're subscribed. I got a lot more stuff on the way. Thanks for watching.